Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of adoration, Hallelujah. Now, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus. And as you are sitting under the Word of God each day, as you are growing in His Holy Spirit, can you begin to sense, are you beginning to sense, the difference between the flesh and the Spirit? When you wake up in the morning, your flesh is in this world, and it is compelled and enticed, but almost as a separate entity, your soul exalts and loves and adores the things of God. And it's almost like you feel like two different people. Your body feels the labor of this world, but your soul feels like an eagle that is soaring through the skies. And you're realizing a stark difference between what your facial expressions show and the joy that lies within your heart. Well, that's exactly how I feel, friends, and I hope that you do as well. For truly, as the Bible tells us, it is joy unspeakable, and it is full of glory. It's better felt than told. It's nearly impossible to express through verbal communication. But it is something that we're all too aware of. It's very simple, very subtle, yet so profound. It is, friends, the joy of the Lord that causes us and compels us to seek even greater obedience, greater allegiance unto our great God and King. And we know because of each new act of obedience, of each new act of service, of each new act of surrender, we become fuller and fuller of the joy of the Lord till it almost feels like we can't even contain ourselves anymore and we're going to leave these mortal bodies. And it seems to tease us of that glorious moment when the Lord Jesus does call us home and we're only left to say, come Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Well, friends, that's where we left off in our last time together, Genesis chapter seven and verse five, where we are told that Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Oh, how I wish that was true of myself. I wish that my testimony when leaving this earth would be that Don did all that the Lord commanded him throughout his whole life. And yet I have to hang my head in shame knowing that I have failed my Lord often. Now the story that begins in verse six says Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Now, Although this is a very profound story in the history of men, it is a simple story. As we were told in chapter 6 and verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And so God, to rid the earth of the evil, sends a flood to destroy all that is living. Now, if you were to do the math in chapter 7 and chapter 8 specifically, you would find that the waters were upon the earth for a year. Noah and his family and all the living creatures that Noah had brought into the ark were in the ark for one year, and I believe specifically 10 days. Although, as we know in verse 11 and 12 of chapter 7, the great deeps were broken up beneath the earth, the windows of heaven were opened and it rained upon the earth. And in verse 12, the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And so God commanded Noah to enter the ark with his family and all living creatures that were to be protected. And verse 16 tells us the Lord, the Lord himself, the almighty shut Noah in. The Lord shut the door. And as the waters increased, in verse 19, they prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven, the mountains were covered. Fifteen cubits upward, or 22 feet above the highest mountain. Everything was covered. 
and all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Fowl, cattle, beast, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, and every man. And in verse 23, every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping things, the fowl of heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Chapter 8, verse 1, God remembered Noah. And he remembered every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And so God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged or they began to decrease. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain was restrained. Now the ark rested in the seventh month and on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Now, people have been looking for the ark for a very long time, and as far as I know to this date, no one has truly discovered its whereabouts. But it's not really important because although man is looking for physical evidence to explain the existence of God, those of us that have surrendered to him, that follow him in our daily practice, we know that he's alive. We know that he exists. We know that his word is true. It's like the old song says, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy over my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. You ask me how I know he lives? He walks with me. He talks with me. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. We don't need physical evidence to prove the existence of God. Jesus said in the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, even if the dead were to come back from the grave, men would still not believe. And yet they continue to look for things like the Ark of the Covenant or Noah's Ark. But we are told here that the Ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. And Noah opened the window of the Ark which he had made and he sent forth the raven. And the raven never returned. It flew to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. And so Noah sent forth a dove. The dove, finding no rest, returned unto the ark. After a period of days, Noah again sent the dove out. And when she returned this time, there was an olive leaf in her mouth. And so Noah knew that the waters were drying from the earth, that the leaves of trees were now being exposed. And so after another period of days, Noah sent the dove forth again. But this time she did not return unto him. Now, if you'll remember in chapter 7, verse 11, it says the 600th year of Noah's life, the second month, the 17th day of the month, is when the flood waters begin, both from beneath the earth and above the earth. And here in verse 13 of chapter 8, it says it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. Again, if you do the math, you're going to find that that was one year and 10 days that Noah was in the ark with all these animals. Now, we're only left to speculation. Were the animals in hibernation? Were they sleeping during this time? Well, we know that they were eating because Noah took food upon the ark for them for that purpose. Well, if they're eating, then they had to have deposits. They had to relieve themselves of the food that they had eaten before so that they could eat more food. Where did these droppings go? I mean, if you've ever been on a farm, you know the smell. Can you imagine of living with that smell for an entire year? The door was never open to the ark and there was only one window. So as we imagine Noah being on the ark with his family for an entire year with all these animals, we can understand that this wasn't a luxury cruise. And it had to be very difficult for Noah. Well, God spoke unto Noah in verse 15 and says, It's time for you to leave. You and your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives. Bring forth every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both the fowl of cattle of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, so that they may breed abundantly in the earth, be fruitful, multiply upon the earth, and replenish the earth. And so Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, they all went forth out of the ark. 
And notice the very first thing that Noah did in verse 20. He built an altar unto the Lord and he took of every clean beast. Now remember in chapter seven, verse two, it says of every clean beast, you will take thee by sevens, male and female, of all beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. And so here we are told back to verse 20 that Noah took of every clean beast, of every clean fowl, and he offered burnt offerings on the altar. And this is Noah's way of showing both gratitude for God's protection for him and his family through this great flood. And it was also recognition that God is our great provider. God is all powerful. He is almighty and he deserves all worship and praise from man. And it says in verse 21 that the Lord smelled a sweet savor. This sacrifice was pleasing to the Lord. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For I understand that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. And so God is basically saying, I understand that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And even a great destructive act of God, such as a worldwide flood, cannot change who man is. The only thing that can change who man is, is his old heart must be replaced with a new heart, taking away the old desires and implanting new desires so that the things he once loved, he now hates, and the things he once hated, he now loves. And I will do this by giving my spirit unto men. My spirit will possess them and will lead and guide them into all ways of righteousness and all truth. And so God finishes in verse 22 by saying, while the earth will remain, this is my promise, seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. There's a purpose to the seasons that happen in this world, and there's a purpose that happens to the seasons of our lives. It would be wonderful if our lives were all the time springtime or summer, but we have to experience the cold, hard days of winter. Old things have to pass away so that new life can come. And so we go through these periods of seasons in our lives. And God has promised us until the day that the earth is renewed, that we will experience these seasons both in our relationship with him and in our life upon this earth. Now, friends, what we must see in this story is this isn't simply a historical document reminding us of how God has worked in the past. But in this story, we see the Lord Jesus. For you see, the Lord Jesus is the ark of our souls. It is in him alone that we can find salvation and we will be saved. We will be delivered from the destructive things that are going on around us. Yet if we leave the ark, we fall victim to the flood waters that seek only to destroy and kill everything alive. But if we remain in the ark, if we remain in Jesus, no matter where the winds blow or where the flood waters take us, we're safe because we are in Jesus, which means we remain surrendered unto him in his will and obedient to all things he has commanded. And just as God used Noah to change the world by being the father of the new world, so will God use each of us to change the world around us as we too do according unto all that the Lord commands us. And so let us seek a life of obedience, friends, and let us be very aware of ourselves, very honest with ourselves where we are going wrong. Let us not lie to ourselves and deceive ourselves. But let the spirit who resides within us take that old man of flesh and nail him back to the cross each and every day so that we can live faithfully before our king and we can walk through our day each and every moment full of the joy of the Lord, knowing that he is our highest priority in this life. 
Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful that you're again with us. The next time we're together, we'll pick up at chapter 9, verse 1. Until then, I pray that you walk in the joy of the Lord, friends. And I pray that even in the most darkest of moments, the light of the Lord Jesus will shine through your life. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.